Hey everybody, welcome to you all to a new video. We're still going on with the JIT Gen series and in this episode we're going to talk about sine and cosine. So, these two functions are ubiquitous, you find them mostly everywhere and are super useful inside Max for a lot of uh, graphical purposes. So in this episode we are going to see how we can use them inside JIT Gen, building on what we saw in the past episodes. Okay, so let's go. So first of all, what are sine and cosine? Well, they are a couple of trigonometric functions. And what is a trigonometric function? Well, uh, trigonometry is a branch of mathematics that basically deals with uh, triangles and the relation of the angles inside these triangles with the edges of the triangles, so with the sides of the triangles, right? So I've built these graphics, as you can see, to better kind of visualize, also for myself, the relation between uh, the sides uh, of a right triangle and the sine and cosine function. So first of all, we have to say that sine and cosine function are periodic functions. Let's start with the cosine. They are periodic functions, so for every input they receive, they will always output a value between minus 1 and 1. So uh, we got here a unit circle that has a, a radius of 1, since it's a unit circle, so this is going to be the positive one for the x-axis, this is going to be the positive one for the y, and this is going to be the negative one for the x-axis and the negative one for the y. So regarding the cosine, we can see that when the, it receives an input of 0, the value of the cosine is going to be 1. It's actually written also here. So in fact we can um, think that the x-axis is the input of the function, and the y axis is the output of the function, so we know that when the input is, uh, is 0, the cosine has an output of 1. We can see this from, this, uh, from, the, sine, from the cosine function representation. Okay, then when the angle goes on, so when our input gets bigger, so the x input inside the cosine function gets bigger, we see that the cosine gets smaller and smaller. So, when the input reaches the value 1.58 something, and this is not a casual number, this is the number pi, which you probably heard about, it's the number pi divided by 2. So the number pi is something like 3.14 something, okay? So divided by 2 is 1.58. So pi half, so half pi basically means the cosine function gives us a value of 0. And in between an angle of 0, and half pi, uh, the cosine function gives us values uh, in between 1 and 0. It basically gives us the values that the circumference, this quarter of circumference, will give us if you would project um, a line that from the circumference goes on the x-axis, this value on the x-axis is exactly the value of the cosine. Okay, so the angle that we are aug augmenting here, if you will project a line that goes from the um, intersection of this uh, line that goes from the center and is elevated by that angle, the cosine function gives us the value of the projection of that line on the x-axis. So that's the relation between um, sine and cosine function and the uh, unit circumference. So we say that at uh, pi, half pi, uh, if the cosine function will give us a value of 0, and as we go on, uh, it will give us negative values. Okay, so you can see on the y, uh, this is the output of the cosine function, and now it's giving us negative values that are below 0, right? And then when we arrive here at pi, so a complete, we, we made a complete half circle, so this is the value pi, which is basically 3.14, we have that the cosine gives us a value of minus 1, because in fact, in fact, if we project a line that goes uh, from the intersection of this uh, hypotenuse of this right triangle with the circumference, we can see that the value that we get uh, gets always more close to minus 1, right? Then when we go on, the cosine starts to rise again, until we arrive to 3 half pi, so 3 times half pi, and then we have that the cosine gives us again a value of 0. And then we can see, when we arrive at the end of the circle, 
so 2 pi or back to 0 basically, we see that the cosine gives us back the value 1. So it, it goes from 0 to 1, as you can see is also represented here on the x axis. Cool. Let's take a look now at the sine function, which basically works the same way, but instead of looking at the x axis, we now have to look at the y axis. So when we have a value of 0 as an input, so we have an angle of 0, uh, the sine function it's going to have an output of 0 because the projection of this line, this red line, on the y axis with an angle of 0 is 0. When the angle increases, the projection on the y axis of the circumference, basically, increases as well until we arrive at half pi, where this value is going to be 1. Then we go on, and this value is going to go between, it's going to go from 1 to 0 until we arrive at the value pi, when we have a, uh, an output of 0 for the sine function, and then we go on to 3 half pi and we have a value of minus 1 for the sine function, and then we go on back to 2 pi or 0, and we got again a value of 0 for the sine function. Okay, so nothing fancier than this. Uh, by the way, these graphics I've got for the load for free on my Patreon, so check the link in the description to get those graphics. Alright. So, let's close this patch, and let's go back to our uh, gen function patch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to delete everything inside here, apart from the inputs and uh, the param time. So, away with that. Cool. And now I'm going to create a cosine function. Going to create a vec with four inputs to visualize our output. And I'm going to use the normalized coordinates. Now I'm going to switch the x-axis of the normalized coordinates. So the coordinates go from 0 to 1 on the x-axis of our input matrix. And I'm going to get the cosine of that, and I'm going to visualize this as the red value. And this is what we see. Because we got values between 0 and 1. Let's actually go back one second to, uh, to the graphics. So we said when we got a value of 0. So let's see if we can manage to visualize them all at the same time. Maybe like this. So when we got a value of 0, which is the beginning of our, our coordinates, here, so they start from 0 on the x-axis, right? We can actually see that also. Uh, we can actually maybe create a second output in our JIT gen and just visualize the coordinates. Then we can visualize this with JIT cell block. Let's connect this to the second output. Right. So it's going to go from 0 to 1, right? On the x-axis. So when we have a value of 0, the cosine function will give us a value of 1. In fact, we can see that we have full red. Then, when we go on uh, with the coordinates, until we arrive at 1, so an angle of 1, this is basically this value here, we will have a value that arrives to 0 0.54. In fact, if we will take a look at this output here, with plane minus 1, we can see that we arrive from 1 to 0 0.54, which is the expected value, right? So, in order to have a complete um, half circle, so, I mean, the value that goes from 1, when the angle is 0, then going up to 0, and then going to minus 1, then we can achieve that by multiplying the, uh, the, the x-coordinates by pi, which is a constant that Gen gives us already inside. So, we don't have to write 3.451 or something like that, we just have to write pi, and it already has this constant value inside. Okay? So we can see now that uh, the cosine function outputs value that goes uh, between 1, then go to 0, and then go on the negative side, and they go to minus 1. In fact, we can see it also on the JIT cell block object. We go from 1 to 0, then go in the negative realm until minus 1. If we would use the absolute value that simply makes this value positive, so, even if it's negative, it's going to make the value positive, we can see that we get that. So, the value goes from 1, arrives to 0, and then goes back up to, to 1. It will be minus 1, but since we are using the, uh, the absolute object, it gives us the absolute value, so it goes back to 1. Okay, 
in case we want to make a complete full circle so going from zero as uh, from going from one sorry to zero then minus one then zero again and one we can multiply instead of pi we can multiply that by two pi which is another constant that gen provides for us and this is what we will get very well in case we will use instead of the cosine the sine we will have the same um, uh, the same result. Let's actually do like this. Let's attach the on one side we will visualize the cosine, and on another GP window we are going to visualize the sine. So first one will be the sine, and this is going to be the cosine. And now we are creating another GP window here. Exactly. So this is the sine, and this is the cosine. Now. Um, as you can see, these are basically the same values, just offset of half pi. Okay, because if we will move these um, these graphics half pi on the left, we will start from the from the value one, and then this will go on like the cosine function basically. So the sine and the cosine function give us the same result, just offset by an angle of half pi. So for example, let's actually. So let's actually visualize that in this way. Let's create another 2 pi here. Let's connect this to the cosine. And then before we go here in the in the 2 pi of the sine, we're going to sum this to time. Oh sorry, no. Uh, we don't have to sum this here, we have to sum this after the after the um, multiplication by 2 pi, okay? Otherwise our input will also get multiplied by 2 pi. So right. So once we uh, sum half pi, which we saw is 1.54 actually, to the sine, we see that we get the same output of the cosine. Let's actually create a couple of tags for that, sine and cosine. We see that we get the same output. So they are basically the same function, just the input is offset by half pi. Okay, in case we activate this clocker, we can actually move this function and basically have a continuous output that goes between minus one and one. We are seeing, uh, we are not seeing the minus one part because we are using the absolute value that gives us only positive numbers. And for example, use the green color for the cosine. Okay. So in case we multiply this value for something bigger, this is going to move faster. Correct. In case we want more of these columns, we can simply, for example, uh, multiply this value by something bigger. Like, for example, we can write time, uh, time multiplied by 2, time multiplied by 4. Oh, and by the way, this is also something proper only to cheat, Jen. We can actually write an expression inside the operators themselves. Okay, so super cool. This doesn't work in Max, but this works in Gen. Okay, so this is very, this is very cool. We can, for example, use the value of uh, sine and cosine to mix between the two videos like we did in the previous video, but instead of using smooth step or linear mixing, we can, we can use, for example, a cosine or a sine mix. So we saw, for example, that the sine will give us value between 0 and... let's actually connect it here. Okay. But without the time part. So this is now the sine. So we saw that the sine gives us values between 0 and 1, then it's going to back to 0, and then the zero, and then this is going to be the negative values that go from 0 to minus 1 and then back to 0. So we can actually multiply that only by pi. So we only get the part that go from 0 to 1 and then back to 0. And then we could use, for example, uh, this value for the mix. So we see in this case, uh, we get the, the video number 1, where the black part is, then we get the video number 2 here, uh, where the white part is, and then going back to uh, to 0, we get the, the video number 1. Okay, so it's not a super interesting mix, but uh, we can use it in this way, just to show you how we can, for example, use that. We can, of course, um, we can, of course, multiply these input coordinates, so let's go back to time. We can multiply these input coordinates also for a bigger value than pi. For example, instead of pi, we could just multiply it by 20, so whatever we want. 
And then instead of maybe using the absolute value, we can say we can use the clip object, which basically clips the values between the numbers that we say. So they will never go below zero and they will never go uh, more than one. So this basically means that instead of going in the negative side, we stay at zero, which then means for us to visualize the video number one. And then when we go to one, we visualize the video number two. This is kind of a pretty interesting mix because we get a smooth transition between the two videos. All right. I want to show you a last uh, way of using the sine and cosine with videos uh, for, uh, for now. We're going to see anyway sine and cosine a lot. I use them a lot during my videos, so you are going to encounter them a lot more. But one thing that we can do is, for example, a Swedes R, G, and B. And then, for example, take the cosine of those values and then use these as the output. And maybe multiply them by some bigger number. And then we get, and then we start to get some strange, interesting effects. For example, we can multiply this by something more, something greater. And then basically, this means that we are taking the cosine of the color value, okay, multiplied by some random values, which then means that every shade of color will have a completely random output according to its result uh, as the input of the cosine function. For example, we could even do this with the single colors to get a more interesting result. So it's RGB and then use a vector, so one for the alpha. Then we are going to use these as the red value. Uh, we could use again the absolute value of that. Oh, maybe we can keep it negative anyway. It's going to be clamped automatically by JITGEN because colors cannot be negative. Right? So, uh, the more we multiply this, uh, the, the color input, this basically means we are making the, a higher frequency for the, for the sine and cosine function, which means a higher change, a rate of change for the color output, okay? So the smaller is going to be the value for which we multiply the color, the smaller is going to be the rate of change in the output. Uh, the bigger this value is going to be, the higher is going to be the rate of change for every single uh, uh, small variations on the input. So we can achieve pretty interesting results. Let's maybe use another video like the, the chickens. Oh, and now we can see where it really goes. It goes crazy. Can maybe try to diminish the rate of change. Something like this. We could even, for example, sum the time to that. And then get the colors changing with time. Okay, which is pretty interesting. Okay, so um, I will stop here with this video. I hope it was useful and was not too confusing. But we are going to see anyway the cosine and sine a lot in uh, future videos and uh, future patches. Okay, so thank you for following and I remember you can uh, check my Patreon for more patches and to get a direct contact with me. And I will see you in the next video. See you! Ciao everybody!